We're going to continue our tour of the cargo home by taking a look at the cooling and heating system. Meet Gary Schlatterbeck. Gary has installed heating and cooling systems for years, but this system is a little different than you would expect in a home. Gary, let's talk about the heating and cooling system for this home. Typically, you might see it more in a commercial application? That's correct. Um, the product that we're using has an inverter technology um, compressor, but it also incorporates variable refrigerant flow. And you see more of that type of application done on maybe um, apartment houses or offices where you're trying to uh, individually zone areas and that type of thing. All right, you mentioned variable refrigerant flow. Help us understand what that means. A good way to understand that is if your car is on cruise control and you're just moving refrigerant back and forth from the outdoor and the indoor, as each zone uh, calls for heating or cooling, and it basically just applies more refrigerant or more BTUs to that area. As we look here, uh, Gary, help us understand a little bit what we're seeing in that process. So the refrigerant comes in from outside and it goes to this branch box. And as you can see, each one of these branch boxes are individually labeled so that that's the area that it's controlling. Okay. So you have your kitchen, the upstairs, and the living room and so on. Now, here in the upper Midwest, we can get kind of chilly, uh, but this system will work down, you were saying, down to, to minus 13? That's correct. This system is designed to run down to a uh, negative 13 degrees, but in this application, we went ahead and put an air handler in to handle the basement and some of the common areas, and that has a little bit of strip heat in it just to buffer those days. Okay, yeah, those days where we might get below minus 13? That's correct. All right. The variable refrigerant flow systems are like enhanced versions of a ductless mini split. The outdoor unit is connected to several indoor units that may call for different conditions. When the indoor unit is in cooling mode, they act as evaporators. When it's in heating mode, it will act as a condenser. So you're really bringing together, as we look here, a couple different technologies for this home. Mm -hmm. Off the branch boxes, we flow to five or six different zones in this home. Okay. And each zone has a different indoor product. For example, we have a, a standard wall hung cassette here, whereas upstairs we're using ceiling cassettes. Okay. Should we take a look upstairs? Yeah, let's do it. Oh, okay. So Gary, we're on the main floor now. Talk to us a little bit about the units that are here. Well, up here we use uh, what we call ceiling cassette units. We utilize these so that they could protect their wall space for hanging pictures or whatever they want to do for the inside decor. Um, this unit's kind of unique in the fact that it has a sensor in it, it's called IC sensor, so that if uh, somebody's sitting in a chair or something, air will not blow direct on it, it'll, it'll rotate and move the air away from them. So it really makes it very comfortable. Sure, sure. Let's talk about the, the cost of this heating and cooling system. First, the, the installation costs, what we're looking at. On an average home like this, you're going to be up around fifteen to 17000 installed. Is that a little bit more than a, a conventional system might be? It is a little bit more than a conventional system, but with it being an inverter technology on the compressor, we're only cooling and heating certain areas of the home at any given time. So that if you're not occupying the upstairs, you're saving energy up there. As we're heating and cooling down here, you can anticipate saving somewhere around 40% on your cooling. So that's significant. So I might pay a little bit more on the installation, but my annual costs in terms of heating and cooling because of that zone system are going to be substantially lower. Not only that, but the level of comfort in your house is going to be significantly different. And you were saying the system outside, it, it's very quiet. Very quiet. You know, they're going to have high-end appliances in here, uh, dishwashers that run, you know, some tremendous decibel ratings. We can expect the same out of these type of units. That'll be that, that quiet of a system. That's correct. Well, Gary, it's fascinating on the technology and what you've shared in terms of the, the heating and cooling system here. And if you'd like to learn more about mini splits and how they work, visit our website at powerhousetv.com.